Hi, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video I'm going to be showing you VLAN trunking protocol, otherwise known as VTP. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up VLAN trunking protocol on three different switches. Uh, we're going to use GNS3 just for topology use. Um, we're not going to be actually doing any v, uh, VLAN trunking protocol within GNS3. Uh, I have here uh, three uh, physical layer 33550s and what I'm going to be doing is configuring VTP across all three of them. Uh, VTP is used for ease of administration for your VLANs so instead of manually going to each switch uh, trunk port on your switches and you know uh, allowing uh, you know VLANs through you can you can use a VLAN trunking protocol to replicate your VLANs uh, across your uh, layer two switching topology uh, dynamically. So say for instance on switch one we have VLAN 100 that we create. Uh, VLAN trunking protocol can um, pretty much move this update from switch one to switch two to switch three. Again, it's just used for uh, ease of administration uh, among most reasons. Again, the VLAN information is uh, stored on your switch under the VLAN VLAN.dat file in NVRAM or Flash. Um, what you normally, if you um, create VLANs and say you reload your switch, unless you delete uh, that VLAN.dat file, those VLANs will keep reappearing. Uh, also, you can do a, a write erase and delete the configuration, uh, but you're really going to need to do a delete. Uh, you're really going to need to delete the VLAN VLAN.dat file in order for uh, your VLANs not to be there anymore. Uh, there's three main modes to VLAN trunking protocol. You have your uh, client mode in which you receive uh, basically updates from the, v, uh, the VTP server and the VLAN uh, VTP changes cannot be made on a uh, VTP client. Um, um, the second mode uh, seen is transparent mode um, in transparent mode, a switch will receive updates from the VTP server and pass them on, uh, hence the name transparent. So the updates come into the switch and the switch will send out the updates to uh, its neighbor's uh, VLAN VTP switches. However, the updates will not be um, affected the updates will not affect the transparent switch. So any updates, say a new VLAN is added on the VTP server, those updates will not replicate to the VTP transparent switch. They'll just be passed through the transparent switch to the other switches, uh, mainly the uh, client, VTP client uh, switches. Also, we'll see too when we configure the switch as transparent, what we will see here is that the um, revision of zero, we'll see the revision number of zero on the transparent switch. And that basically indicates that that switch is not participating in the updates. Also, again, like I just said, the revisions, revision numbers, every time there's a change in the V, uh, in VTP, uh, a, uh, basically the revision number will increment and go up by one, and that update will be propagated through the network. And that way all the switches will basically uh, have the same revision number to be on the same, uh, you know, to be on the same page as far as their VTP, uh, you know, configuration goes on the, the switches. So, what, what you can also see here is if we introduce a switch, say uh, we have a VTP, we make switch one the VTP server, 
and it has a revision number currently of three and then say we introduce switch two which is also a server and has a higher revision number um, the switch with the highest revision number uh, updates will trump any other switch so basically say I have 100 VLANs on switch 2 uh, has a higher revision number and then switch 1 has a lower revision number and it has say 10 VLANs uh, the 100 VLANs on switch 2 will propagate uh, to switch 1 and switch 1 will overwrite its uh, configuration uh, introducing the 100 VLANs from switch 2 so as you can see you have to be very careful when introducing uh, new switches into your VTP domain um, as the high revision number um, the, the switch with the highest revision number if it's set into server mode will trump the other uh, servers on the uh, switching domain and as you um, as we will see the VTP domain uh, name can be configured so that's really all that is needed for the switches to uh, start talking to each other uh, and passing updates is one switch just needs to to be set uh, two switches need to be set in the same domain so what we'll do here is we'll just uh, go here into switch one and we'll go ahead and uh, you can do a show VTP status and as you can see here the default mode for your switches is to be put into server mode um, server mode is what you uh, that's the third mode and final mode of VTP that we use uh, server mode is the mode that uh, your switches are in by default um, Server mode will allow you to make changes to your VLANs and then propagate your VLANs to other uh, uh, VTP clients and other uh, route. Um, I'm sorry, other switches in server mode. So, uh, server mode is where you do most of your VLAN administration. And as you can see here, we also have a couple other. Uh, things under the show VTP status we have the uh, domain name which is we have not configured a domain name for VTP uh, we also have what's called VTP pruning VLAN trunking protocol pruning mode where you can prune away VLANs that aren't used on the local switch um, you can generate traps with VTP uh, you can also configure, as you can see here, authentication with the MD5 Digest. So what we're going to do now is we'll just set the VTP. Actually, one second here. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll make switch one. <coughs> excuse me. I'll just go into global config and just do a VTP domain. And we'll just create our domain CCIE. And what we'll do is we'll go to switch two. We will make switch two a we'll make switch to a VTP client. So if we do a show VTP status again, what we'll see here is that switch two by default is in server mode. And as you can see here, the domain name has been replicated across to switch to so what we'll do here on switch to we'll just go into global config we'll do a VTP mode client so we'll make switch to a client and I'm going to show you here if we do a on switch one if we do a show VLAN as we should see there's no VLANs configured so if I just go under switch one and do uh, 